We both started playing music very young. It was more of our parents' vision at the very beginning. And I think they never would have guessed that we would run so terribly far. I think it would have been in our early teens when we went to a bluegrass festival. We were just blown away by the improvisation and joy that music can bring. A genre that is very focused on instrumental ability, I mean, like to improvise and to go on journey. Bluegrass, nine times out of ten, it's very up-tempo music. And especially for me as a mandolin player, very frenetic. And so being able to leap into the drummer's role of the bluegrass band as a mandolin player, I loved it. It was so exciting because you could try and tighten up the brain finger connection so that you felt like you're having a musical conversation. interesting to me because we started with bluegrass. I think that was really the, the jump off point for us in terms of inspiration. But leaping deeper and deeper into roots American music as a general rule, like you know, mountain tunes or Celtic stuff, the blues, creeping down into the delta, you sort of have to unbraid some of that technical ability that you've learned over the years in order to create some of maybe the more soulful sounds that you would hear like on a Sunhouse record or a Robert Johnson record. And that's been such an interesting journey for us. It's marrying ability, but also with the soul of blues music. It's just like, it, none of that matters. It's all about the soul. So initially we would make records in studios with you know, a producer that would be there. And we were frustrated by those experiences because oftentimes the sounds that were then being, being created with like okay, the amount of verb or this kind of a slap, are we going for a, a more like throwback sound and not having the vocabulary or the understanding to really like shape the way that our record sounded. That became frustrating for us. And so we decided to really work on making demos in order to put across as clearly as we could what kind of recordings we wanted to be making. <laughs> So I started going nuts with GarageBand. I got hooked up with some Mac Daddy sound libraries. That just blew my mind because then you have access to a car door slam and how you can integrate that to be your kick sound or your snare sound or you can have a, a stomp and the shaker and, the, and create these sonic realms in which to build songs. And that was so exciting to me. I think of the Allman Brothers as a real touchstone and from them listening to Derek Trucks and the quality of his slide playing is just, ah, oh, it's incredible. That's originally what drew me to the slide was the vocal quality and I think I feel more comfortable singing through the lap steel than I do singing with my own voice. And so I think I, I do like to try and let it be as brainless as possible. I like to hear and then push forward. Sometimes I'm surprised by what's what's coming in in a good way or a bad way. So I thought, okay, I, I should think more analytically about it. And then there's a part of me that's very fearful to, to interrupt how I feel towards it. Classically trained, but I can't read music on the lap steel. Megan, what's your tuning? <laughs> She gets asked that like every third question. It's, I'm an open G, like a like a dobro on a on a lap steel. Outside of country music, it doesn't have to be country or Hawaiian. It's really a rock and roll instrument. It is challenging to be in a band with someone like my sister because instrumentally, she's a very intuitive player. Music just kind of seeps out of her. She just sort of like sits and plays her slide and is like not even looking at the fretboard, gazing into some heavenly ether. And I'm like, I'm gonna go home and like sweat some blood and tears over learning this Stevie Ray Vaughan riff, and then I botch it when I try to put it into a solo, but I'm okay with that. Again, it's like the sun and the moon thing. 
but screw you. A lot of times we'll get hired out as side guys in different people's bands and talk about entering someone else's universe and being uncomfortable with the vernacular and the timing and like how much are we pushing or laying back or are we using effects pedals or not. We've toured with Elvis Costello for many years. Mm -hmm. Being with just him and the two of us and that's all who's performing on stage, really uncomfortable but also some of the most rewarding moments that I can remember. She would throw songs we'd never played before just to, to introduce a little bit of danger. Like he's all about, let's show the people something real. And it's like, truly incredible. Yeah. Like when you, when you experience that on stage and I think that the, the people in the audience can feel it too. Yeah. And it's surprising That we're on too. the edge. <laughs> You're on the edge. And, and if you succeed, then it's like, yes, it's very empowering. And if you fail, you realize that the failures actually aren't that big of a deal. That's like one sour note and then that millisecond is gone. And there's great power in that. I think for me as a songwriter, Jeff Buckley was a big first because he's so pure and beautiful, but not afraid of the polar opposite of that grungy, ugly guitar tone. And so that really captured my, I think, imagination as, a, as an artist. That was the first time when I listened to someone and was like, I want their career, like I want their musical catalog. I wish I'd written those songs. Skip James is a big Skip one. Skip James. He is more of a hill country blues artist plays in these beautiful open tunings, is very modal, major and minor, in the way that he writes his melodies, and this high and lonesome voice. A big one for me, and he's lesser known, Chris Whitley, is one of the guys that really blew my mind. He's like a junkyard poet. He takes the earth and, and the dirtiness of humanity and being alive and the confusion, while at the same time recognizing how awful and A-W-E-F-U-L like how beautiful and, and reverent life is, that I think is ultimately what has drawn us so deeply to the blues is the timelessness of the lyric. Because you listen to the blues and whether a song was written last week or it was written at the turn of the century, you're talking about the soul, you're talking about the question as to why you're alive. That is the palette from which all of our lyrics are, are written. And we want to the best of our abilities to write a new chapter onto this story that has existed since the beginning of time and hopefully do it in some fresh way. I feel like most guitar players, you walk into a guitar center and you buy your Ernie Balls. They are most definitely the brightest pack on the shelf. I used to play a really heavy string because I thought that I needed to like really make a point. And I'm actually right now, I've been doing the titanium, the coated strings. But for different tunings, I'll typically cross tune my guitar and like achieve something different. At times in a show, I'll take my Strat and tune it all the way down to a B or a C. So for those guitars, I'll typically have the heavy bottom skinny tops just to try and give it a little bit more resonance. I have an old Rickenbacker lap steel. It's from the 40s. I also play through a couple of pedals that I've been playing through for years because I kind of find the tried and true thing and just stick with it, which is an Ernie Ball volume pedal, a tube screamer, and then a Hall of Fame reverb. That's about it. I oscillate. But, but right now, I do find that as streamlined as possible on my rig, I enjoy because there's less for me to kick and mess up while we're on stage. Because if there is some sort of a tone knob that can be kicked and totally fuck up your tone, I will kick it during the show. My first love was actually a jazz master. Having toured with Elvis Costello, of course, he is like the quintessential jazz master guy. Um, but I do rely a lot on, on strats right now. I play through actually my fiance's pedal. It's a TB drive. It's made by a company called Rodenberg. 
And so that typically covers my overdrive and like my more fuzzy overdrive sound. Then I have a little echo pedal, like very basic, and a boost. And that's like, that's, that's basically it. We'd like to just be the meat and potatoes of the blues female fronted rock and roll outfits of the South. Being siblings and playing music together is unlike anything else. Because of that, we have this bond that's really important and really special. I don't know that we individually could have done this for as long as we have. We kind of are puzzle pieces that fit together, and, and being able to go on that journey together has been amazing. And at a certain point, it's also like, literally it comes down to just sitting in a room with a guitar. If you want to, and if you don't, don't. If you want to get on stage, do. If you want to practice, sometimes it's going to be hard. Music is about a feeling and it's about having fun. And the rest of the pressure can just take a hike. I was going to say kiss my ass, but then I was like, PG!